the elephant in the room for me has always been second best. Hello, I ain't number two. Okay. It's actually the first time I've said it out loud, eh? Hey loves, how's it going? Hope all is well. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to talk about Kelly Rowland and her comment of being second best. Now if you don't know who Kelly Rowland is, she is a Grammy Award winning singer and she was a part of the infamous group Destiny's Child. In 2002, she did go solo and she released her album Simply Deep, which included hit songs such as Dilemma and Stole. Now today, Kelly Rowland is a part of the X Factor. She became a judge in 2011. For years, it seemed like Kelly would drop these singles such as Kissing Down Low, Like This, or Motivation, really without a complete project behind. Throughout the years, after watching and listening to several interviews of Kelly, and her former manager, Matthew Knowles, I started to understand a little bit as to why she never really fully followed through with projects. Even when she had her own success going on back in the Dilemma days and being on shows on UPN, her success always seemed short-lived. Throughout the years, she talked about colorism being a problem and a lot of other things. So I completely understand where she's coming from in that comment. Now Kelly said the reason why she was so transparent and said the comment is because she felt right and she felt like everybody in the room was there for her. Now, in 2013, she had a song called Dirty Laundry, and in that song, she talked about offstage turmoil. Reviews. People were saying like, oh, she shouldn't have said that about Beyonce. Oh, she shouldn't have said that. Well, they should listen. And that's what, that's oh, what that I tell should people. should have turned into should listen. That's what I tell people. I'm like, yeah. are you really listening to the song? Yes. So did Beyonce feel any yeah. type of way about the song? No, I played Beyonce. She's very supportive of us. And she was like, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you and and uh, the last thing she said was I never left. Throughout the years a lot of people I believe they wanted to hear these crazy stories about Kelly and Beyonce if there was any internal beef but she also said it's crazy how people made up those stories or they didn't want to see them get along and she felt like they encouraged and empowered each other. I do think management played a factor in Kelly Rowland's success I believe Matthew Knowles is to blame for a lot of things. Just listening to him talk about colorism, although it is a fact, a lot of things that he is saying is very true. It just makes me think, did he not promote her or push her projects as much because of the color of her skin? Take Beyonce and set her over here. You can't very, compare. Very successful you can't, solo If you don't project. compare the rest of the industry with Beyonce, you can't compare Solange, Michelle, and Kelly with Beyonce. Black women that have been uh, successful with airplay were all of light complexion. And they all get pushed. Correct. And you being in the music industry, you know yeah. that's valid. Beyonce, Alicia Keys, Mariah Carey, J-Lo, all of those are extremely talented. But it's also true, absolutely, that colorism and shade of color is it's a fact. The I mean, dark-skinned female singer still is having a hard time in the music business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's, that's still out here. Right. You know, it's not the thing that people jump across the table immediately when they see a dark-skinned girl. Escape, I thought they was the greatest talent in the world. But then I was hit with the... Yeah, but they ugly as this. And Matthew also came out with a book called Racism from the Eyes of a Child, which was probably a very good read. But throughout his press tour, a lot of people had a lot of concerns. I remember Wendy Williams asked him, you know, did you push Beyonce more because of this reason? Did you know that you would always want your daughter to be the breakout star? No, not really. Lies you tell. No, 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 no. Nope. Kelly sold four or five million records outside of America because she's done quite well outside. Then he had other people talking about how he stated that he thought Tina Knowles was close to white or white and he met her at a party and that his mother said don't bring any nappy-headed black girls home. Now, although he managed other dark complected girls with this logic and with this sense, how are you able to make them successful is the question. Eventually, Kelly did part ways with Matthew Knowles. And I really feel like throughout the years, the industry, not only society, but they really made her feel as if she was not good enough. And although a lot of people don't believe it's because of color, you know, it really is. Color played a factor. And she talked about that as well. And her record labels just saying that she was completely 
worthless. I was looking at this magazine and it said what beauty looked like. And it was all uh, women that did not look like me, yep. uh, with blonde hair. And I was thinking, well, if that's what beauty looks like, then where do I fit in? At one time, it was even rumored that she bleached her skin once a promotion on her Instagram came to light a lot of people started to go in on her and asking her why would she mess with her skin and she did have to address people because of this situation i am not the one to bleach my skin nor do i want to bleach my skin nor do i have to bleach my skin i don't even think that that it's not for me so don't go saying stupid stuff like that you ever thought that it could be the lighting like this light the, what you gonna say like this streak of bleaching is like crazy right here dude I am still chocolate, forever chocolate, proud to be chocolate. Shout out to my chocolate girl. A couple years back, she came out and said that she didn't always embrace her chocolateness. She said sometimes she would go out in the sun and she would try to shield herself. And Miss Tina knows Beyonce's mom tried to help her overcome that by telling her she was gorgeous and telling her to love her skin and how rare chocolate was and how beautiful her skin was. And... You know, she really started to embrace it because of her. Now, please remember, Kelly was raised in a household of having Beyonce in, in Salon. And then Kelly comes in the picture. She's like a kid to us because she lived with us um, gosh, 10 years old, 11 years old, um, up until her adulthood. Her mother was a nanny. They lived in a white home. They actually lived in a white home. Two doctors. And one day her mother came home and uh, they sat her down and told her they were getting a divorce and that literally they had to move out in two weeks. And her mother wasn't prepared for that and asked if we would keep Kelly because Kelly was really committed to this, this girl group. And her mother needed to go back to Atlanta to just get herself together. So having being the only dark skinned girl during that time in the household, maybe that was the reason why she felt that way. Also talks about how Miss Tina Knowles tried to make her more confident and giving her these bold hairstyles throughout the year and making her embrace her own natural hair. And she always made me feel like I could try anything new with my hair. Oh, we'll just try it on Kelly. You know it's gonna work. Whether it was red, whether it was purple, whether it was blue, whether it was burgundy, for some strange reason, she just knew it was gonna work. And she, I don't know if she knows that, but she gave me the confidence behind my hair. And until this day, Miss Tina Knowles has a program called Tina's Angels, and it's for teenage girls between 14 and 15. She handpicked them, and she tries to mentor them, teaching them financial ability, guidance, and advice on how to walk, talk, interview for jobs, proper etiquette. And she wants to nurture them, teach them self-esteem, and how to not feel the pressure of being judged by their peers. They've inspired me a lot, and I've seen all this tremendous growth and positivity, and I mean, I, I could do this every day with I them. I love that. Yeah. Although Tina Knowles helped her out a lot as far as her self-esteem and confidence, it was her record labels that basically just did not believe her, believe her drive, and believe that she could be successful. Although she had the number one record at the time, Sony record label dropped her from their label and they told her that they felt like she had no more worth. The thing about girl groups is it doesn't matter what you do and how far you come, you will always be compared to the members of that group. And that is the case that Kelly is going through. She can't even do interviews on her own without being asked about Beyonce. Talking about new music, you know, all the talk this week has been about Beyonce's new album. Have you heard it yet? Have you had an opportunity to give some thoughts on the whole thing? I sure have. It's great. It's absolutely great. Really different though, right? Yes, yeah, really different. Is that... But getting back to what I'm here to talk about, yeah. Claritin, um, I'm very <laughs> excited to be teaming up with Claritin. And... In my opinion, if Kelly was to come out with a record today, I would really hope that she really get behind it and push it because I do not want another single. And that's just my personal opinion. She always come out with singles that are hot, but not a full project. And it's good to see that she has people on the team that really understands her and really know what she's fighting for and know where she wants to go as far as the music industry. Now, is she going to be as successful as Beyonce? It does not matter. Like, we have to stop pinning one artist over the other. Let everybody have their own success in their own right. 
Let me know your thoughts and your opinions about this down below. Thank you guys so much.